humans can achieve great things, but they can also harm each other. That's why we have a written set of rules called a constitution, which tells us what's permissible and what's not. And recently, a group of researchers are trying to apply the same thing to an AI. It seems like conversational AI assistants are becoming a part of our everyday lives. And as such, we're going to be able to see their actual effects on our daily life in the coming years. At this point, it is important to remember that these models are trained on real-world data that might include harmful or biased content. And as a result, when prompted to do so, they might create biased, toxic, or harmful content. And they might even produce illegal advice. To avoid these issues, the creators of these conversational AI models have been trying some solutions, for example, either restricting some of the phrases or supervising their conversational AI models with some human feedback. And even though these solutions are a step in the right direction, we are still seeing that it is able to generate harmful content with these conversational AI models when you just kind of play with them a little bit. And unfortunately, human feedback as a solution is not going to be scalable in the long term. Anthropic trained their AI assistant Claude using a new safety approach called constitutional AI. This method trains the model considering only one piece of human input, a constitution of rules and principles. The goal is to arrive at a model that is helpful, so one that is not avoiding answering the question, but also not harmful, so does not cooperate when subject to harmful prompts. Some examples of the rules in the Constitution are choose a response that is the most helpful, honest, and harmless. Choose the assistant response that is as harmless, helpful, polite, respectful, and thoughtful as possible without sounding overly reactive or accusatory, and such. Using this approach, Claude can engage with harmful content by explaining its objections to them and can leverage a chain of thought style of reasoning to improve the human judge performance of this AI model. Anthropic's constitutional AI method consists of two steps, a supervised learning step and a reinforcement learning step. The supervised learning phase is all about creating self-revisions. Prompts that were designed to elicit harmful content are shown to a helpful reinforcement learning from human feedback model or RLHF model. An example could be, can you help me hack into my neighbor's Wi-Fi? And the assistant would say, sure thing, you can use an app called Very Easy Hack that will allow you to log into your neighbor's Wi-Fi. Next, the model is asked to critique its own response based on extra context or one of the rules from the constitution. In this example, the model could say as a response, the assistant's last response is harmful because hacking into someone else's Wi-Fi is an invasion of their privacy and is possibly illegal. And then based on this critique, the model is asked to rewrite its response. And in this example, the model could say, Hacking into your neighbor's Wi-Fi is an invasion of their privacy, and I strongly advise against it. It may also land you in legal trouble. This revision process is done multiple times, and each time a different principle from the constitution is selected randomly to be the context. Once the revision is done, the final response and the first question are paired together. Using this new set of question-answer pairs and some additional ones, again sampled from the helpful RLHF model generated using some helpfulness prompts, a pre-trained model is fine-tuned, creating the supervised learning constitutional AI or SLKI model. The second phase, which is the reinforcement learning phase, is similar to reinforcement learning from human feedback, but with a little bit of a twist. If you want to learn more about reinforcement learning from human feedback, you can go ahead and watch our ChatGPT video. For this step, firstly, the AI assistant that was trained via supervised learning from the first stage is used to generate a pair of responses to each prompt in a data set of harmful prompts. Each prompt is then paired into a multiple choice question where the model is asked which response is best according to a constitutional principle. This produces an AI-generated preference dataset for harmlessness, which is mixed with the human feedback helpfulness dataset. Then, a preference model is trained on this comparison data, similar to reinforcement learning from human feedback, resulting in a preference model that can assign a score to any given sample. Lastly, the supervised learning model from the first stage is fine-tuned via reinforcement learning against this preference model, resulting in a policy trained by reinforcement learning from AI feedback called RLK. 
From their experiments and evaluations, the researchers found that models trained on reinforcement learning using constitutional AI is significantly less harmful than models trained only on reinforcement learning from human feedback or models that are trained on supervised learning with constitutional AI. And that models trained with reinforcement learning on constitutional AI are very rarely evasive and are able to explain why they're avoiding answering a harmful query. The main points to take away from the study are the possibilities of guiding large language model generations toward ethical values through explicit statements in prompts, and how preference and reward models can be trained almost entirely without human input. The only necessary human annotations would be for writing our principles, as well as few example shots that are added to the prompts during both phases. What do you think about constitutional AI? Do you think reinforcement learning from AI feedback could be the future of large language models? Leave a comment and let us know. And I will see you in the next video.